Okay, printed book. Um, demo attempt number three. So this is the binding that I want to show you. Um, it's called stab binding. Um, pretty much because you're literally pushing an awl all the way through um, your entire book block and sewing through that as one big thick stack. Um, it should be known that there is an inner binding in here and an outer binding. So this outer binding is really more just for decoration. It's actually that inner binding in there that's holding everything together. Um, however, you need a thin like Eastern paper to do that inner binding and I'm kind of assuming that most of you don't have something like that at your home. Um, so I'm skipping that step and the way we're going to get away with skipping that step is just by choosing a much smaller, like a much thinner book block. Um, you're not required to do any books that are this thick anyways. And again, just because of like supplies and that kind of thing, I'm just going to show you how to do the decorative outer binding and how to make um, this cover. So you can, um, there's a million different ways to do this outer binding and I'm sure you can find some different ones online and I can even share some different patterns with you. Um, so just know that this is just one way out of a lot of different ways to show you. So this is a demo example I made. Um, this is a student example using the same binding. So this project um, was a flip book. Um, so they had to use this binding and then the imagery needed to have some kind of progression. Okay, so those are just two like finished examples for you. But the first thing we're going to do is make our covers. And for this, because the book is bound all along one edge, the cover needs to be flexible as well. There are some modifications with board that you can probably find out there, but the simplest version is just to make like a soft cover of some kind. So um, what you're going to do is take your book block and you just want to take a sheet out of your, so this is my cover paper. You wanna take a sheet out of your book block and just kind of you know, line it up and then you're gonna mark on all four sides of one sheet. And I'm just making little marks to show, show me where to make the scores here. So then you remove that and now I've got um, now I've got those little tick marks there that are showing me where to score. So using your bone folder, just go ahead and score along all four sides. So using that first sheet of your book block, it's just saying this is how big my cover is going to be. So um, the cover is constructed out of two pieces of lightweight paper. Um, and the, it has a turn-in, so there's like an outer sheet that's um, visible on the outside of the book and an inner sheet. So it'll make more sense here um, when we get into constructing it. But all I've done now is just kind of put those four score lines around the outer edge. And you just want to go ahead and reinforce your, your scores. So fold them in. And you want to do that on all four sides. Okay, and then um, you want your turn ins to all be the same. So you could measure over five eighths um, or half an inch. I'm just going to use my jig that from from before. So my jig is five eighths, and I'm going to trim off all that extra, and that will just make my turn ins nice and even. Just kind of improve the craft of it overall. So I'm just lining my jig up with those scores. And this one looks pretty good. Okay, so now I've got my cover sheet scored all around on four sides, um, the same dimension as one sheet of my book block. And then I'm gonna, in order to turn in, this is kind of like when you're wrapping a hard cover, you want to um, miter your corners at a 45 degree angle. And the way that I get my angle is by folding the corners in and then lining up. See here that little score mark that's visible from the backside? So I'm gonna turn over and line up 
that score with the score on the inside. So let me do that real quick and then I'll kind of bring it up here. Can you see those two, this score here on the corner lining up with this in, inner score. And that just gives me like a nice sharp 45. So when I open this up, now I've got a line there that I can trim those corners off. So you wanna do that also on all four. So line up the outside score with the inside score and reinforce it with your bone folder. Just like that. And then you can just use a straight edge. So you wanna be a, um, a little generous when you're trimming these so that when you fold them over, you don't remove um, that corner. If you trim these too tight to that inner inside corner, then when you go to fold your turn ins, you're missing like a chunk of paper here. So just give yourself like, I usually line my ruler up with my, my um, fold and then I push it out just a hair farther so that when I'm trimming, I know I don't take off too much because you know you can always take it off a little bit at a time but if you cut it then you're out of business so just cut them all off and then this book you don't I mean because we're using pretty thin um, paper for the covers you don't want to use like a liquidy glue so I I just use um, I just use a glue stick and you're gonna glue all around on these edges here and turn them in so you've got something kind of like this guy and then in order to cover up my turn-ins I just cut another sheet of um, thin paper and paste that down on the back so this guy um, should just be about an eighth of an inch see that little overhang it's kind of giving it a square on all four sides so you just want to cut that you don't have to even measure it that like accurately just cut it a little bit smaller than the outside cover so that gives you a thin flexible cover that um you know looks nice on both sides so i've already got some prep just to kind of speed things along here today and um the next step is just punching and sewing so you're going to take your entire book block the two covers and you just want to square them up and then I'm going to use this little piece of paper to protect my block because after this now we've got to um, we've got a punch and when we go to punch our sewing stations none of this can move so I'm going to use a little clip there and that paper just keeps my book from getting dented from the clip so Here's my block inside of my covers and it's all nice and square along the spine side. And then I'm, I've got a jig prepped here. So my jig, um, these, this row of sewing stations is set in at a half an inch from the spine. And then I did my first two outer sewing stations also at a half an inch. And then the other three sewing stations are just distributed evenly. So you need, um, can you see, you need five sewing stations and then i'm just going to use like some scrap cardboard um so that i can go ahead and punch all the way through this so line up your the tip of your awl and then go all the way through so again get it right in the crosshairs there and then go all the way through and you do that for all, all of your sewing stations so um you're gonna pass your needle and thread through the sewing stations multiple times, so they need to be pretty wide. So once you get them, once you get the initial holes punched, then I take my jig away and then put your all, like all the way through there and make a good, a nice big wide sewing station. So you're gonna do that for all five of them, just kind of reinforcing that sewing station. Okay, so that looks pretty good. And then you can just set all this aside. You don't need that. Um, I've got needle and thread here, and the thread length is um, six times the height of your book. So height, remember, is head to tail. And if I took my thread here, I'd just be counting out one, two, three, four, five, and six. And now we're gonna sew. So you want to start from the back in the sewing station that's closest to one end 
and you're gonna pull it through and leave yourself a little tail. And then you're gonna wrap around what would be the tail of your book and go back into that same sewing station. So you're basically just making a loop around the bottom here. So back in through here and remember, don't pierce the thread. Okay, and pull it tightly as you're working, but hold on to the tail, otherwise you'll pull it all the way through. So then you're gonna put your, now we're gonna make a stitch around the spine of the book. So you wanna put your needle back into that same sewing station and then bring it through the front and pull that tightly. So we've got a, one stitch around the tail, one stitch around the spine, and then we're gonna move on. So work your way up to the next sewing station with a straight stitch. And then in order to make our first set of crosses, see those crosses on the spine? You're gonna come from the back of your book and pull it around the front and put your needle into that next sewing station. So that's making the first leg of an X and then to make the second leg, you're gonna backtrack. So bring it from the back around the front into that previous sewing station, which makes an X. And those X's should really be sitting right along the spine of your book. So then work your way forward so I'm on the back now, straight stitch, and now here we are in the front, and I need to make that second X. So I'm gonna put my needle around the back and work it into the next sewing station. See how that made the first leg, and then I've gotta cross it again. So from the front, around the back, into that center sewing station. Okay, and then once you get your X's, it's pretty much just filling in the stitches. So work your way straight and then fill in on the back. And now we're gonna make the same as we did on this side. We're gonna wrap it around, making a stitch on the head of our book and then wrap it around and make a stitch on the spine of our book, like that, and then filling in all these blanks. So pretty much just sewing back and front, back and forth through the front and back until all the stitches are filled in. There's no blank, so they're all straight and filled in here and the same on the front. So here, when we get down to the end, I've got the tail from the start and the tail that my needle was on. And you want to just tie your, a square knot right over that last sewing station. So I'm pulling it so it's kind of coming out this direction. And that just kind of helps hide that knot if it's existing over the sewing station versus out here and then you actually don't need to take your needle off I kind of forgot that but once you've got your knot tied then you want to put your needle back into that first sewing station okay and all this is doing is gonna pull see that movement it's gonna just pull that knot right into the sewing station a little bit so you can trim that real close to that sewing station and then you can trim the needle and thread okay so that's it um, now you've got this great little um, floppy book um, same thing I would say think about the fact that you lose about an inch of visual information because the binding is on the side but it is kind of different from some of the other things I've showed you and you can work with single leaves so you could just plan imagery front and back instead of having to think about how things get imposed with nested signatures and things like that okay so that's it stab binding